If everything works, I will mention something this morning that it seems as if most Nigerians, or many Nigerians, let me put it that way, softly put, just want to, you know, flee, in his words, out of the country, wherever some would go to Benin Republic, who goes to Ghana, to go wherever but the country. And the reason why you see citizens fleeing the, the, the most blessed nation in the world is some people would say lack of good leadership. Uh, is are the people at the, the hems of affairs doing anything at all? The answer is yes. Are they doing the best? Please answer the question. And so that's why we're saying that if you want something to change for the better, you're not going to live in the hands of others. You have to go all into it. And that's the reason the essence of Nigeria's Next Year project put together a Silverbird Group to really encourage Nigerians to see the politics of the country as our responsibility to actively participate and make sure that our voices are heard when it comes to choosing who leads us across the board, federal, state, local government levels, we all should ensure that we partake in this. And so officially you're welcome to the Nigerians Next Year segment on the program and uh, we'll be taking a look at the qualities that uh, we're expecting of our next president in the country. Um, right, and then so we have um, Adamu Garba. Adamu Garba, interesting uh, um, uh, political uh, aspirant and um, I, I just saw a picture of you, uh, Mr. Garba. Great to have you join us, Adamu Garba. Thank you very much for having me. Excellent. So help us clear the air first and foremost, um, whether you're running for president or for the National Assembly. Because I saw a post on your Twitter um, handle a short while ago, which did seem to suggest that you were going to run uh, for, the ha for the National Assembly rather than the president. So he help us understand what exactly is going on. I'm aspiring for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in the coming 2023 election. So another, another one which we, we want you to help us clear is with this issue of um, withdrawal letter. Uh, I know you had first and foremost express, expressed your concern over uh, the high cost of the expression of interest form and nomination form. But this one that, you ha that has to deal with um, the withdrawal um, clause, which is a form which is included in the forms uh, which you're supposed to submit back. Have you filled yours or do you have consent over it? The truth of the matter is, you know, um, as soon I was here one time uh, complaining even about the cost of the nomination form, because I pass particularly and in my principle don't believe that you use money um, to be able to filter the quality of the candidate that will represent an office that is supposed to deliver public good. So the amount was too high, uh, extravagant, when you compare to all the amount of expression of interest and nomination forms all over the world, Nigeria is the highest, about $170,000, you know, is the most expensive that it has ever been. Even in the U.S., I think one of the places in the U.S. that have the highest cost of nomination form was Iowa, which is like $40,000. Uh, places like New York, where Trump came from, was $5,000. Ghana, our neighbor, $2,000. Ours is very expensive. So on getting to, um, to purchase of the form, um, I have to assemble the network of my friends and, and family members and also uh, people that are our supporters online, publish an account number for everyone to contribute so that we can obtain the form. Uh, while some contributions are coming, especially from private side, we're able to raise, um, of course, the amount that can be able to get the form. But we decided to adopt a strategic weight to look at what may happen. Um, are, are our warnings really going to be, uh, the consequences we warned about really going to show? It shows, because you can see every other person that feels like you have 100 million era whether he's a member of the party, whether they are serious, whether they are qualified, whether they have the competency and capacity, whether they have the right programs or not, they only do out 100 million and come and buy denomination forms. So it's really looking like we have made a kind of an arrangement where money, not quality or competency, is the main filter between the candidate that we are presenting to Nigerian public. So we decided to adopt this strategic way. And suddenly again, part of those people that pick the form 
I think I got the fear of um, that anticipation of withdrawal, like postdating of your withdrawal, voluntary withdrawal from since like a week before it came to media. It was very, very shocking. When I saw it, I said that I'm expected to postdate my withdrawal before I submit back my form. So how is that really going to be? Am I uh, cornered into a strategic trap whereby the money I'm going to give to obtain the forms in anticipation of going into primary election? My end of being just a money just to participate and accept to be part uh, to the consensus arrangement that the party may bring about, or what? And what does that portend to my credibility with my supporters, with the people that have brought in their monies to be able to acquire this form? Or should we just even return their monies to them and look into the system properly? Or should we chart a better way forward for, for ourselves? You know, not, not that way. So these are, these are the con, uh, concerns that we are having. Uh, but, but between now to, to tomorrow, uh, we are going to conclude on what we need to do whether we should return these monies, whether we should go for the form, or whether we follow another way. So this is these are what we are looking at. But to the best of my knowledge, for you to postdate your withdrawal, it's really a very strategic trap. And uh, although the party said clearly that uh, it's an optional, optional doesn't mean that you should not feel it. Optional means that you have uh, three constitutional obligations or options that you can choose for conducting your own primary election either direct, indirect, or consensus. So it means that when you fill the form, that place was supposed to be for consensus. Should the party decide to go on consensus arrangement, you should have already post-date your withdrawal. And this, uh, to me, uh, doesn't seem a, a very appealing uh, arrangement, and, uh, and we are waiting to look at what might likely be the best interest of, of our future here. I want to believe you have your ears to the ground as to, for instance, it's the first time that we have an instance where uh, a party would put such a uh, Form 18 in part <laughs> among the forms that aspirants have to fill. Uh, it says that it's not, uh, it's optional, but you're saying that if you have to go ahead with this, you have to post date the signing of that. Uh, what are you hearing from among party faithful, especially those other aspirants as you? Uh, are they signing the uh, forms as, as it is? Because we hear some people already, you know, uh, about 21 people, I guess, have paid, about 23 we hear, have paid 100 million hour to purchase the uh, nomination as well as the expression of intent, intention forms, so to speak. So what are you hearing clearly and how has that been able to shape in, uh, your action moving forward? Based on my own findings and my conversation with some of the aspirants, uh, colleagues, some of them that I have personal interactions with, they are all mostly in a state of suspense. Nobody knows what's going to happen. And again, um, don't forget, we have only tomorrow as the last day of picking the form and perhaps the next day to submit back the form. And we have some people that have picked this form for over a week. Up till now, they are yet to return a field form. So. Um, we cannot really be able to anticipate what might happen, but everybody is instead of suspense. There are some backyard grumbling about the whole arrangement. There's a fear that the party is trying to impose a consensus arrangement, which I believe personally that the party is going towards the direction of consensus. You know, uh, that it's clear that what is going to happen is consensus. You know, that's what it is. Uh, so, so all those all those kind of things that are happening are the situation that. Uh, some of um, the aspirants are also facing when I interacted with them. Grumbling, suspense, confusion, and some of them are even saying, should they submit or should just, just uh, jettison everything? There are these kind of questions that are, that are coming about. So we wait to see. Um, finally, by 11th of May, which is next tomorrow, uh, everyone is expected to submit. So we see, we see what, what's going to happen. Maybe if we pick the form too tomorrow, we are expected to submit on that day. And if we don't pick the form, uh, we will, of course, notify Nigerians why we didn't do it and what should be done next. So, uh, while, while we keep our fingers crossed and see what happens, um, Adamugaba, you know, there have been all manner of things happen, especially with the ruling party. You've had caucuses in the southwest and have meetings and see how uh, they can have a common front uh, ahead of uh, the, the party's um, selection process. But, what about you? Will you be willing, if the question is posed to you, to withdraw from the contest? And if your answer is yes, what will be the concessions you'll be willing to make if that ever happens? 
The thing is, if you are expected to withdraw, and it was made very clearly by the form that you should postdate this withdrawal, why are you going to participate in the primary election in the first place if there is ever going to be a primary election? Why? You know, if their desire is to contribute to the party, there are so many ways you can contribute to the party. You don't have to go to the primary election. So, sorry, so, so sorry, these Adam are the kind of options we are looking at. No, because I'm, you are expected I'm sorry, to Adam. state this your draw. Adam Ogarba, sorry, so sorry to interrupt you. For... Sorry to interrupt you, but just to clarify a, a little more here. I, I meant that if, um, now, not, not the withdrawal now, you say there's a direct, there's the indirect primary on the consensus, but you believe this will go uh, to the consensus. So I'm saying if any of the, the, the party's hierarchy walks up to you and tells you that, look, we've decided to go ahead with this particular aspirant to be our candidate, and we want you to withdraw from the contest for this person, what, what will your concessions be, and will you be willing to agree to that sort of uh, demand? That is why I said clearly, if it is stated on the form, like page 18, that you should postdate your withdrawal. Why do you even um, have concerns? Suppose, let's say I pick the form and I get into the party primary election and I fill to that place. I should support the party. There is no way you should uh, rebel because you have already done it. If you insist that you don't agree after you have postdated your signature or the notary public stamped document, you know, or the commissioner for oath, which legal basis are you fighting? <laughs> you don't have any legal basis to fight. So it means that the most sane, responsible thing for you to do is to withdraw. Else, you refuse to fill the form. And of course, again, first challenges. My sincere advice and recommendation to all those that have speak the form so far is that they should fill that place. Because lack of doing so is even going to show some sense of um, an internal um, mistrust or rebellion against the party. So you must fill the place. That's, that's my sincere advice. If I pick the form, I really will not have any reason why I should not fill that place because it is part of, part of the requirement that is stated on the form. So it's clear that this is the direction of the party. So except if you don't want to be in the party, then but that's the direction of the party. Annoying, confusing, you know, angrily so, but that's just what it is. All right. So now that we know that you've not picked the form and tomorrow is deadline, there's every possibility that you do not. But another big story that many people are worried about, issue that many people are worried about, is the proposed zoning. Uh, many people feel like uh, power should shift to the south. Uh, some are saying that it does not matter where the next Nigeria CEO, the president, comes from. Where do you stand? I actually stand on the part that we don't have to mind about um, where Nigerian president should come from. We, should, we have reached a point whereby we should begin to see ourselves as Nigerians, as opposed to some regional people that have just been coming here to share power base or certain entitlement or arrangements. This has not been working for us. It's been causing more confusion, divisions among ourselves, polarizing us, amplifying our fault lines, and begin to <laughs> define us in a settings whereby they are like us versus them. And this is something we should all together avoid. Everywhere you look at it, it's still a confusion. If we are even talking about zoning, for instance, and zoning the presidency to the south, which part of the south are we zoning the presidency to? Are we zoning it to the southwest that had a president and vice president for 88 years? Are we zoning it to the south-south that already has a president for six years? Or we're zoning it to the southeast that had no president at all but don't uh, bring the necessary votes that is required for a win? This is a confusion. So when we look at all those kind of things, it's just, it's just a kind of an arrangement. And if you uh, are confusion, and again, if you go back to some states where they are talking about the zoning, and let me pick example like River State. You know the, the problems that is happening between Governor Yusuf Mwike and Farah Dagogo. The only difference is me, I can see finally about that, is that Wike is an Aquarian. Rotimi Ameti is an Aquarian. And Wike did eight years. He gave me a good time these eight years and handed over to Wike for eight years. All of them are equal. Why don't they zone it to the side of Calabari or the side of Boni? You know? So this is it. So you cannot talk about zoning at the national and at the local. You don't do that. So however you want to look at it, the zoning arrangement is all going to polarize and intense entitlement as opposed to competency and capacity to deliver the right services that the people of Nigeria require. And my generation should not inherit a divisional Nigeria where confusion, 
is the main thing that define our polity and politics, especially you just rounded up an interview about the Ukrainian crisis where the world order is being reshaped. The entire global arrangement is taking a new dimension where Nigeria is supposed to clearly map out its own strategy to be able to cling, align properly for it to benefit in the 21st century. We're here talking about power sharing on a country that is not even strong in its footing. So we should, we should just look at who can help us navigate the 21st century. Who understands the international politics and how Nigeria is supposed to key in to align? What are our sincere realities? What are our differences and how can we accept them? How can we tolerate uh, them? How can uh, we work with them? Uh, how can we go beyond right, right. A, a, an issue of ethnicity and religion right. by looking at what our candidates are supposed to offer that is going to Thank transit Nigeria right. away from poverty and right. transform it to but, one of but, the better nations in the world? As, I think as these we are go, the things that we should be looking at, absolutely. not just uh, yes. power sharing. Right. And as we go, I'm, I'm, it's just unfortunate, but how time flies when we're having great conversation with um, a, a colorful character like you. But to, to imagine, Adamo Garba, before we let you go, that you, you began a fundraising on Twitter because you considered the 100 million naira for, for your party to run for office uh, too much. And then when we began the interview, you introduced yourself as an aspirant for your party. But well, meanwhile, you don't even have the form. And, and deadline is tomorrow. How, how are you going to resolve this? You, you're not going to make it, most likely. Yes, um, as I told you earlier, we have done some public fundraising based on the Twitter publishing that we've done and other social media platforms just to see what Nigerians can do and if Nigeria accepts um, um, this, this nomination form. So far, the donation we got online was less than 2 million naira, the one that has been donated online. But privately, we are able to raise to the amount that we can use to buy the form. Me personally, I'm looking at a responsibility when people trust you with their monies to be able to go and represent them. They actually trust you with responsibility. What is that your responsibility? Is it your responsibility to carry this money and just go and sink it in a venture that perhaps might be, might not really bring about the necessary outcome? All right, all right Adamo Gaba, let's, let's get you clear. To go there and show Mr. Gaba. So our target here is, yeah. we have scheduled to have a meeting. I have invited most of the funders, most of the people that have contributed immensely to me to raise this fund. To have a conversation with them tonight till tomorrow morning, we've scheduled from um, the 12 a.m. till very early tomorrow morning, to be able to conclude all this arrangement and look at what is the best way forward. The best way forward, should we go and pay, get the phone? Should we just return these monies to them, all of them, including those that have uh, contributed online? Or should we chart a new way forward for, for our own greater good and our interests and our future political participations in Nigeria? So these are the questions we need to address. So you're saying, you have, have a, you're saying you have 100 million naira what now. Is best, what is in the best interest of what we are supposed Mr. to do? Mr. Garba. When the party is likely right. going towards consensus. Mr. Garba, you're saying you have 100 million naira right now. Is that what you're saying? Or you don't have it yet? Yes, we have, like me personally, what I'm supposed to pay is like 65 million and I have over 85 million. So oh, okay. uh, we, we, can, we can be able to get it. Ah, okay, okay. We'll have to leave it at that, and we'll look forward to hear from you uh, by tomorrow when the deadline happens, if you're going to buy your form or return the money back to the people who uh, donated. But thank you very much, Adamu Garba. All right. Thank you very much for having me. All right. All right. Um, a very, very interesting interview there. But let's let you know before we go that you can go on our webpage, www.cvabertv.com forward slash bowl to see the name, uh, names of probable contenders uh, the list is there, give it not to whoever you feel uh, can really be the best leader come 2023. It's very easy to go. Just click on that uh, link. Just do that. Go ahead, type it in, click on it, and give it not to whoever you prefer to be an ex-leader. Interesting stories coming from politicians, and I think that days to come, we'll be hearing stories like this uh, that will take us to the... To, yeah. better understanding of who our politicians are. Because the question is, who and why yes. are we voting someone to pass? So get your PBC yes. as well. Get your PBC. All That's right. It. So we've, we, we've, got, we, we've got to go. We have to go. <laughs> and start the fundraising. <laughs> start <that> fundraising. <laughs> For any problem you have in this country, do a fundraising. The money will show up. Are you? Yeah. I mean, Adamu Gaffa could raise. How much is he raised from Twitter? Two, Two million, million naira. I, unbelievable. But they say they have 85 million naira now. So it's never too late to start to do a fundraising. But... And, and the things I've heard this morning, I'm in shock. 
a little bit in shock. All right, and more things, more, more, more uh, topics will be discussed tomorrow on News Hub. So tell your friends, spread the news, join us on News Hub tomorrow again, 7 o'clock in the morning. I'll see you then by the special grace of God. I'm Shil Oye. Did you have a wonderful day? And I'm oh, 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 it's cold out there, but make sure you can take it to a uh, Rashush week and Kwahiri everyone. Kwahiri everyone. <laughs> It's game on as the process of choosing your most preferred contender for Nigeria's next chief executive in 2023 is now in full swing. Go to www.silverbirdtv.com to click a yes for your choice from the list of over 50 individuals, men and women who have been identified as probable contenders for the position of Nigeria's next chief executive in 2023. Remember to go to www.silverbirdtv.com and click yes to choose your preferred contender.